And a couple of things. Uh, first thing, uh, since we just had our first test, another great time to remind people about the awesome uh, supplemental instruction now called the uh, PALS program, Peer Assisted Learning um, for Calc 2. It is, uh, just to remind you guys, it's on every Monday from 2 to 3 in Macy 201, every Tuesday from 1130 to 1230 in Fretwell 120, every Wednesday from 4 to 5 in Macy 201, and every Thursday from 1130 to 1230 in Fretwell 120. So again, great things to, another resource you guys happen to have to make sure you guys get your questions answered. Great place to go get review problems. They'll be more than happy to do some of your problems up there on the board. Uh, it really de it's really designed to help you guys out. So another resource you guys have besides coming to see me, coming to see Joseph, our preceptor, and our office hours. And don't forget, mo uh, a great place is also on the third floor fretwell over there uh, right across from the math department, the Math Learning Center. It's uh, another great place to go there, uh, open tutoring, get your questions answered. But you got to be proactive. you got to be the ones going after this stuff. Don't wait for someone to knock on your door and sit down with you and start explaining calculus to you. you got to go seek help when you need it. All right. Last thing we were doing, we were in section 6.3, which was uh, partial fractions integration, looking at the techniques on how to integrate fractions. And we just started the idea of the complete the square. So um, I just want to remind you of a couple problems to get us back in the gear because we just did have our first test. So um, I want to remind you. So here's a couple of problems I just made up before class here. Now, I want to remind you about the integral of 1 over u, u squared plus a squared du. This is the uh, famous uh, extended version of the arc tangent formula. The integral of 1 over u squared plus a squared du is 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c. But you got to have this fraction looking like a u squared plus an a squared, a variable squared plus a constant squared in the denominator type thing here. That tells me it's going to be an arc tangent problem. But a lot of the times we're going to have these quadratics in these particular problems, and they're not in the form of u squared plus a squared. To be able to get it in this form, we've got to complete the square. Just to remind you, to complete the square, you've got to have half the B term squared. Okay? Your B term is, comes from the quadratic formula, is the 6. Now, to be able to do this, you want to make sure the coefficient in front of the x squared is a 1. This is 1x squared plus 6x plus 25. When the coefficient in front of the x squared is a 1, yet your B term becomes 6. So you're going to take half of 6 and square it. Half of 6 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Your magic number to complete the square is 9. And what you're going to do is this. You're completing the squares on the x's. So you group together the x terms, and you push back to the constant a little bit. Your focus is on the x terms. What you're going to do to complete the square is you're going to take 1 half the b term squared, which is 9, and you're going to add 9 to the x's. But this is not an equation. This is an expression. So you've got to maintain equality. So if you give it the problem 9, you're going to have to take it away 9, and you take it away from the constant. That maintains equality. So if I add 9 and subtract 9, it's still the same problem. And now when you do that, this problem, you'll complete the square on the x's. So you'll get, and this thing will factor perfectly. So you'll see that uh, i got x squared plus 6x plus 9. That factors into x and x. What times what is 9? That adds up to be 6. Uh, 3 and 3, and your sign is going to be plus plus. It's always the same thing. It'll be a perfect square. And this 25 minus 9 is plus 16. So this problem turns into x plus 3 squared plus 16. And now it's in the form of that u squared plus a squared aspect we're at. But the one thing I did not put in the notes was what if the coefficient in front of the x squared is not 1? Well, you, the only way you can complete the square is the coefficient in front of the x squared has to be a 1. So this is what to do when you've got a problem where the coefficient in front of the x squared is not a 1. Like in this example, I've got 2x squared minus 16x plus 13. 
To complete the square, here's your steps. First thing you want to do, again, is group together the x terms, x squared minus 16x, leave a little space, and push your constant, minus plus 113, and push it out towards the back. Your focus is on the x's. But I need to have a coefficient in front of the x squared to be a 1. Well, most people say, hey, why don't you just divide everything by 2? Yeah, that works great if you want you to do to one side of an equation do the other. The problem is you've got to have an equation to do that. We don't have an equation. This is just an expression. So to get that coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared, you factor whatever the coefficient is in front of that x squared out of just the x terms. In our case, we have a 2. So I'm going to factor the 2 out of all the x terms. When I factor the 2 out of this 2x squared minus 16x, I get x squared minus 8x. Leave a little space, close parentheses, plus 113. I factored the coefficient from the x squared out of just the x terms. Now, inside the parentheses, the coefficient from the x squared is a 1. Now I'm going to complete the square, but be careful. To complete the square, you still do this 1 half the b term squared trick. That'll be 1 half and how the b term in this problem is negative 8 squared. So you're going to have to take half of negative 8 and square. What is half of negative 8? Negative 4 squared is what? Negative 4 squared equals 16. 16 is your magic number. So I'm going to add 16 to my x terms. I'm going to give it exactly what it needs, but here's my problem. I've just put something foreign into my problem. It is now no longer in balance. So if I give it, I have to take it away, but there's a problem here. So a lot of people, they'll add 16 and they'll subtract 16 and they just screw the problem up because here's the deal. By putting a plus 16 inside the parentheses, you've got this magnifier, that coefficient out front, that's going to affect that 16. So by putting a 16 inside the parentheses in this problem, I didn't add 16. How much did I actually add? 2 times 16, which is 32. So by putting a 16 inside the parentheses, I really added 32. So I'm going to take away 32 to maintain balance. You have to kind of keep up with the effect this has on the complete the square. Now, watch what happens. This will turn into a perfect square that you can factor. This will be 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 16. That x squared minus 8x plus 16 is going to factor into x. x. What times what is 16? 4 and 4, that add up to be 8. And because it's a plus, same sign always. And it's a minus 4, so it'll be a minus there. Plus, let's see, 113 minus 32 is 81. So this is going to turn into 2 times x minus 4 squared plus 81. That's that u squared plus a squared look to it. But you see, the problems I make up and the problems I put on my own notes, I have nice numbers. You guys are going to be dealing with web work, crappy numbers. So I just made up something that just to have crappy numbers to see if you guys can handle it. Here's another quadratic. 3x squared plus 5x plus 10. I want you guys to complete the square so we can turn this thing into this u squared plus a squared look. All right, notice first thing. I think again, you got to know, I'm going to complete the square off this guy. So I'm going to group <laughs> together my x terms. 3x squared plus 5x, a little space, and then push back that plus 10. Your constant's kind of like your garbage collection agency. It, you're manipulating the x's, and then you're equal but opposite, and you add it to the constant and just clean it up later. Okay? So this is a quadratic where the, my leading coefficient from the x squared is not a 1. It happens to be a 3. So I'm going to factor a 3 out of the x terms. When I do that, that'll give me 3 times x squared plus, what does factoring a 3 out of a 5 give me? Right, fractions. Awesome. 5 thirds x, leave a little parentheses, close parentheses, plus 10. Yes, you're going to have fractions. Okay? So when I factor a 3 out of a 5, that leaves you with a 5 thirds. Okay? Factoring is basically dividing out. So now, complete the square. You're going to take half the b term and square it. The b term in this problem is the 5 thirds. So what is half of 5 thirds? And we've got to square it. Half of 5 thirds, well, 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 3 is 6, so that's uh, 5 6 squared. And what is 5 6 squared? 
2536. And there's my magic number that's going to complete the square. So I'm going to add 25 over 36. That completed the square for me. Does that make sense? But if I give it, I have to take it away. But be careful. I've got this multiply by 3 aspect of this thing. And 3 goes in 36 12 times. And so by 3 times 25 over 36 is actually 25 over 12. So if I give this thing, that's the end result, is adding 25 over 12, I'm going to have to subtract 25 over 12. Does that make sense? To maintain equality. This is your magnifier. And it's, if you really wanted to, 3 times uh, 25 is 75 over 36. You could subtract 75 over 36, but that's not in lowest terms or whatever, so who cares? But uh, you get the same result because at this point, these are crappy fractions. So now what am I going to do? This thing is going to factor perfectly. This will be three times something perfectly squared. There's no reason to write it twice. It'll be x. What times what is 25 over 36? And it's because they're both plus, you have a sign of plus, 5 over 6. So it'll be three times x plus 5, 6 squared plus, and now i got to do this guy. What is 10 minus 25, 12? Well, that's time for the calculator then. 10 minus 25 divided by 12 is 7.916, whatever. And I'm going to convert that to a fraction, making it look good. That'll be plus 95 twelfths. And there is the perfect square. And my u part, or the u squared plus a squared, the u squared is going to be the 3 times x plus 5, 6 squared, plus the a squared is the 95 over 12. Does that make sense? So... Just to do one more, this particular problem, you know the ultimate goal is to integrate this stuff. So, here we go. Question says, integrate 17 divided by 2x squared minus 6x plus 113. Well, first off, yes, this is a fraction, but that denominator doesn't even come close to even thinking about fra factoring so I can use partial fractions on this guy. So, and because it's a quadratic that does not factor... I'm going to complete it square. So I'm going to come over here and I get 2x squared minus 16x. And I leave a little space and put the 113. I'm going to factor the 2 out of the, the x parts so I can get a coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared. That'll give me 2 times x squared minus 8x. Leave a little space plus 113. Now I'm going to complete the square by taking 1 half the b term, which is negative 8, and squaring it. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. And negative 4 quantity squared is positive 16. So there's my magic number. I'm going to add 16 into this thing. But because of that, too, I've really, by putting a 16 inside the parentheses, I've actually added 32. So I've got to take away 32. And this thing's going to turn into 2 times x. What times what is 16 to add it to be 8? 4. And because it's a plus, you're going to have the same sign, of course. Because the middle term is a minus, it's going to be a minus. So it'll be 2 times x minus 4 squared plus 113 minus 32 is 81. So this problem has just turned into the integral of 17 over 2 times x minus 4 squared plus 81 dx. That's the goal. Now, look at it. 17 is a constant numerator. Don't care about it. What I see in this problem is a number divided by u squared plus a squared. And I know that the integral of 1 over u squared plus a squared du is 1 over a arc tangent of u over a plus c. Because that's rule number whatever we were up to memorized, right? But here's the deal. To do this, you start with u squared. This is a u substitution aspect, but the formula has a u squared. The u squared is going to be 2 times x minus 4 squared. Then you've got to find u, because this is u substitution. Well, how do I get u out of u squared? I've got to take the square root. And then that's going to give me the square root of 2 times, but the square root of x minus 4 squared, the square and the square root cancel, you're still left with x minus 4. Does that make sense? But you got that square root of 2 constant out front. Then you're going to do du, the derivative. 
Square root of 2 is a constant. The root of x is 1, the root of minus 4 is 0, so it'll be 1 dx. Use substitution, move the constant to the other side. 1 over the square root of 2 du equals dx. I'm going to substitute. This is the integral. 17 is a constant. It holds over. Over the 2 times x minus 4 squared was the u squared, plus the a squared is equal to 81, making a equal to 9, so this will be plus a squared du. Where do constants get to go? Out front. So this turned into 17 times integral of 1 over u squared plus a squared du. This makes it 17 times the formula we have memorized for integrating 1 over u squared plus a squared du, is, which is 1 over a arc tangent of u over a. Close your bracket there, and then 1 big old plus c. Then I back substitute. That would be 17 times 1 over a, a is 9, times the arc tangent of u. u is this awesome square root of 2 times x minus 4 divided by a, which is 9, plus c. And just to make it look good, multiply your constants. So the actual answer is going to be 17 ninths arc tangent of the square root of 2 times parentheses x minus 4 over 9 plus c. Yes, of course. Uh, you're right. I lost it, didn't I? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I moved it over here. I replaced the dx with the du square root of 2. I'm going to show you. It's right here. Square root of 2, <laughs> square root of 2, and 17 over 9 times the square root of 2. There it is. Right there. Thank you for noticing that. But this, I mean, I, classic Wilbert problem, because you and I both know uh, some of the nicer problems that we're trying to manipulate and show you the nice numbers yeah, well, random generator on the old web work problems, you're going to get not nice numbers. You're going to get 3x squared plus 5x to fraction crap. So I'm just trying to show you, don't be surprised with this kind of problems. And all right, the square root of 2 is uh, the, the, the dx turns into uh, the uh, du over the square root of 2, putting that constant out front, putting him out here. There he is, and then he just stays out front, and then you distribute. So just keep up with your constants is there. You're going to have a du constant with this guy. All right. So, again, this is just reminding you and going a little deeper of what we, this is the last thing we did before we stopped and had our test. So now we're in section 6.3, and we got some web work problems for you guys to do. So, all right, this first problem says this. All right. Substitute u equals the square root of x to express the uh, integrand as a rational function and then evaluate it. All right, so here we go. This is one of those bizarre problems because then you begin to see the power of this concept of partial fractions and the integration with the arctangent formulas and integrating fractions in general, this partial fraction section 6.3. Because if you look at this problem, this doesn't look like your traditional kind of a problem. It is the problem of the integral of 2 square root of x divided by x plus 9 dx. But they're telling you, hey, this is a u substitution problem, and they pretty much told you, let u equal to the square root of x, because that's going to be the trick. I don't do square root, so that's x to the 1 half power. Then with u substitution, i got to find du. What's the root of x to the 1 half? That is 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. Clean him up. The du is equal to 1 over 2, x to the negative 1 half. A negative exponent goes on the bottom, and a half a power is a square root. So that's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x, with the square root of x being in the denominator, dx. Watch this. I'm going to move the constant with the variable to the du side, because I'm going to substitute in for dx. When I do that, that means the dx is going to be equal to 2 square root of x du. Does that make sense? All I did was take my car, even with the function, you can move the function to the du side. So when I substitute, here we go. This problem is going to turn into the integral. This is a division problem. 
u is the square root of x. So look at this. If u is equal to the square root of x, what does that make x equal to? u squared. So this is going to be u squared. We'll leave that constant for a second, plus 9. And the dx, the dx is going to get replaced with 2 square root of x du. And this guy never got substituted, so it's going to, it's going to hang out there. 2 square root of x. I'm doing what they told me to do. They said let u equal square root of x, which is x to the 1 half. That means the du equals 1 over 2 square root of x dx. To substitute in for the dx, I just solve for dx. I multiply by 2 square root of x on both sides, so I get 2 square root of x du equal dx. So this dx is replaced with this 2 square root of x du. This x minus 9, well, x is uh, basically... Uh, x is u squared, if uh, square root of x equals u, x equals u squared. So this is u squared plus 9. And that 2 squared of x never got substituted for. Not yet anyway, because let's clean this up. What is 2 squared of x times 2 squared of x? 4 x over u squared plus 9 du. But wait a minute. I can't have an x in my du stuff. What's x equal to? u squared. So this becomes integral of 4u squared over u squared plus 9du. I'm doing the long-winded way, but I'm trying to use their definition of let u equal this to the substitution. And remember, when you do a traditional u substitution, everybody in the problem has either turned into a, the u or a constant. You shouldn't have any x's left over. So with this x left over, I had to go back and replace him with u squared. So this problem, which was originally the integral of 2 square root of x over x plus 9 dx, has now turned into the integral of 4u squared over u squared plus 9 du. Now you've got to integrate that guy. Well, what do you notice about the fractions? The degree of the numerator happens to now be equal to the degree of the denominator. Does that make sense? And when the degree of the numerator is the same or bigger than the degree of the denominator, how do I clean this guy up so I can integrate it? Long division. Reminding you of all the stuff you forgot since you took a test. So long division. My divisor is u squared plus 0u plus 9. Anytime there's a term missing, you put a 0 in for it. The dividend is 4u squared plus 0u plus 0. So now let's do the long division. What times u squared is 4u squared? 4. Now I distribute. 4 times u squared is 4u squared. 4 times 0u is 0u. 4 times 9 is 36. What's a long division? What's my next move? Subtract. Changes all my signs. The first term cancels. But 0u minus 0u pretty much cancels too. And I'm left with 0 minus 36, which is negative 36. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as the integral of my divisor, excuse me, my quotient is 4, plus my, div my remainder is negative 36. You've got to put it over my divisor of u squared plus 9. And put your du there. Quotient plus remainder divided by divisor. There it is. And you look at this thing, and now it comes two problems. This turns into the integral of 4 du minus 36 times the integral of 1 over u squared plus 9 du. All I did was pull my constant out front. It's two terms, so I'm going to have to integrate each one. On this problem here, what is the integral of 4 with respect to u? 4u minus 36 is a constant. This is a formula that we have memorized. The integral of 1 over u squared plus a squared du is 1 over a arctangent of u over a plus c. And all the big deal here is a squared equals 9, making a equal to 3. So this turns into 1 third, because it's a straight substitution with the u squared part. So it's 1 over 3 arctangent of u over 3. That goes here, one-third arc tangent 
of u over 3 plus c. Of course, I'm going to clean this up. So this is equal to 4u, and here I'm going to multiply the 36 uh, times a third. Well, 3 goes to the 36 how many times? 12, good. So this is minus 12 arc tangent of u over 3 plus c. But what's that equal to? Remember, what was the original problem? Oh, yeah, it was way back up here, which was in terms of x. That means my answer needs to be in terms of x. What was u equal to? Square root of x. So the answer to this problem is going to be 4, replace u with the square root of x, minus 12, arc tangent of u, which is the square root of x, divided by 3 plus c. And there is my result. So my point to this problem is it was supposed to, again, it's review, web work review, but with this particular problem, you started out with 2 square root of x divided by x plus 9 dx, and it doesn't look like it's a polynomial or a polynomial that should even be in this section. But with the correct u substitution, u equals the square root of x, and du equals um, 1 half u, x to negative 1 half d, dx, which turns into du equals 1 over 2 square root of x du. I moved the entire 2 square root of x to the du side, so I could substitute in for the dx, and then the uh, x on the bottom, since uh, u equals square root of x, u squared equals x. This becomes your u squared plus a squared. You clean up your numerator, and that gave you an x on top, which is a u squared, and it turned into truly a polynomial over a polynomial, which you can do long division, and then integrate each part, but then you had to back substitute. So these things are getting rather hairy on you guys, but if you do one step at a time and pay attention to the problem, and pay attention to the type of forms you got, you, you'll be able to nail it. it, it it's not going to be that difficult. It's just incredibly tedious. Okay? Question. Yeah. Okay. Run that by me again. Good question here. Okay. On long division. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so this problem, when you had 4, the, square, the x was u squared. So now you completely converted it into the u world. And until I get my answer, I'm not going to convert him back. So with this, to clear the top, to clear the bottom, I did my long division and turned it into 4 plus or minus 36 over u squared plus 9 to u. Quotient plus remainder over divisor. Now I'm going to integrate this guy, but, but we've completely converted it into du. What is the integral of uh, 4 with respect to u? <coughs> integral of 4 with respect to u is 4u, right? Minus the 36 is a constant. This one truly is the formula, so I just kind of copied the formula, one-third arctangent of u over 3 you know, plus c. I combine like terms to get the 12, but it's still in terms of u, right? And when I back substitute, u was the square root of x. So that's when I actually got my answer. I replace u with the square root of x. And I got 12 minus arctangent of u, which is the square root of x divided by 3 plus c. Because once you convert him over, you're done with the du and maneuvering the constants around. You're good to go. You just got to finish integrating the problem and then back substitute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hey, granted, tedious. Yeah, absolutely. But... Uh, that this is, once you get it to u, you don't have to worry about that square root of x stuff until the actual very end of the problem. So there's no more square root of x. Everybody converted to u and made it a much nicer problem to do. Does that make sense? Questions? All right. Another web work problem of some challenging status. All right. u is equal to the square... Substitute u equals the, uh, excuse me, u equals e to the x to express the uh, integrand as a rational function and then evaluate it. So here's my problem. And it's a tricky one, so watch this. This would be the integral of negative 16 e to the x minus 40 divided by e to the 2x plus 6 e to the x 
plus 8 dx. So you look at this problem and you go, well, I don't see a fraction. Or, well, okay, there's a fraction, but I don't see any polynomial stuff and I don't see any long division or anything like that. Ah, watch. Here it comes. They told you the deal. Watch what I do. They told me, let u equal to e to the x. That's going to simplify this problem greatly. But this is u substitution. So we're setting you guys up for how important u substitution is, and we're also setting you guys up for the next section I'm about to discuss, section 6.4, table integration. u substitution. Let u equal to what you need to. This one's going to be e to the x. Then you've got to do du. What's its derivative? What's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x, e to the x dx. Now, in the old days of u substitution, we would just move the constant and see if there was an e to the x in the problem. Well, you see we're slightly getting away from that. We're going to actually substitute, and we're going to replace the dx in my problem with something with du in it. I don't care if it's a constant or a function. I'm going to move it to the du side. This is the new trick right now. So I'm going to get 1 over e to the x du equals dx, solving for dx. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to substitute this is that u sub. Here it comes. This is the integral. Now, another thing you need to notice is this. u is e to the x. So there's a minus 16. There's an e to the x. That's going to be a u. Minus 40. I've got an e to the 2x, but this is what I want to show you guys. e to the 2x, that's a multiplying of a power. And when you have power raised to another power, you multiply. This is the same thing as e to the x squared plus 6. There's another e to the x. That'll be u plus 8. And the dx gets replaced with 1 over e to the x du. Now, I'm not finished substituting it in. I just wanted to show you some parts here. Now, finish putting in your u's. Every time I see an e to the x, I'm going to put a u into this problem. So this problem now turns into the integral of negative 16u minus 40 divided by u squared plus 6u plus 8. But that times 1 over x, um, 1 over e to the x, but e to the x is u, and it's going to be in the denominator. So I put a u down there from this guy, du. Does that make sense? That e to the x on the bottom turned into a u. Now look at it. Did you notice your denominator? Well, first off, it's a proper fraction. Degree of the numerator is 1. Degree of the denominator is what? With that extra u, it actually makes it a u cubed. Makes it degree 3. Does that make sense? And did you notice your now your u squared plus 6u plus 8? It factors. How does u squared plus 6u plus 8 factor? Let's see here. What times what is 8? That adds up to be 6. Let's see here. Uh, 4 and 2. So here we go. This is equal to the integral of negative 16u minus 40 divided by parentheses u plus 4 times u plus 2 times u, next to u on the bottom, du. Let's see, let me get this right. It's a proper fraction, degree of the top, so that's degree of the bottom, where the denominator factored. What technique of integration am I going to use on this guy? Partial fractions. Question. The extra u came from when I took dx. Remember, u equals e to the x. That means du equals e to the x dx. You move the constant to the other side. 1 over e to the x du is dx. So when I replace dx, I'm just, it'll be 1 over e to the x du. So you've got this extra e to the x on the bottom down here. But when you substitute, e to the x is u. So that, e, that guy right there is a u, and he shows up right there. There's my u squared, there's my u, there's my u there. Everybody else got to turn to u. So now, this is partial fractions. So I'm going to take this negative 16u minus 40 divided by u plus 4, u plus 2 times u. And I'm going to bust him up into 3, because I have 3 factors of my denominator. It'll be u plus 4, u plus 2, and u. And because these are now, now linear, according to partial fraction techniques, Degree of the bottoms are 1. What does that force degree of the top to be a proper fraction have to be? Degree 0, which means they are constants. I'm just going to, I don't know what they are. I'm going to call them A, B, and C. This is traditional partial fractions. So now, I'm going to multiply 
my entire denominator, my, my entire equation by my common denominator of u times u plus 4 times u plus 2, and the entire denominator cancels, so I'm left with negative 16u minus 40 is equal to a times here, the u plus 4s cancel, I'm left with u times u plus 2, plus b here, the u plus 2s cancel, I'm left with u times u plus 4, here the u cancels, I'm left with plus c times u plus 4 times u plus 2. How many letters do I need to solve for? Three of them. So I need three u numbers. What u numbers you suggest? u equals, I'm going to go for uh, negative 4, I'm going to go for negative 2, and I'm going to go for 0. My annihilators, using the annihilator method. Now, plugging negative 4 in this equation, and I'm going to save myself some space and time by using my calculator here. Plugging in negative 4, negative 16 times negative 4 minus 40 is 24. So I get 24 is equal to A times negative 4, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus negative 2 is 8 plus negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so it'll be b times 0 plus c, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, c times 0, so those terms go away. I divide by 8, what is a equal to? 3, one letter down, 2 to go. Plug in negative 2, negative 16 times negative 2 is 32, 32 minus 40 is 8, uh, negative 8 that is, negative 8 is equal to a, U, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so that's gone, plus B, negative 2, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus C, and negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so those terms go away, so I get negative 8 equals negative 4B, B equals 2. Plug in 0. Plugging in 0, it gives me negative 40 is equal to a times 0 plus B times 0, but plugging in 0 here, 0 plus 4 is 4, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, that'll be plus 8C, so negative 40 equals 8C, divide by 8, and I get C equals negative 5. Does that make sense? So now the problem, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, has turned into the integral of A a was 3 over u plus 4, plus b, which is 2 over u plus 2, plus c, which is negative 5 over u, over u itself, du. But luckily, it has just turned into a very simple integral to integrate. You substitution in your head. What is the integral of 3 over u plus 4? 3, natural log absolute value of u plus 4. Plus, what's the integral of 2 over u plus 2 du? That'll be 2 natural log absolute value of u plus 2. And what's, what's the integral of minus 5 over u du? Minus 5 natural log absolute value of u plus c. Does that make sense? Then, what's the last thing you need to do? Or at least the second to last thing. Back substitute. What was u equal to in this problem? You remember when we started out, u was equal to <laughs> e to the x. So you get this. 3 natural log absolute value of e to the x plus 4 plus 2 natural log absolute value of e to the x plus 2 minus 5 natural log of e to the x. But one last thing here, plus c. Uh, what's the natural log of e to the x? What natural log and e do to each other? They can't slap, so you're just left with X. So you get the resultant answer, and I'm going to write them right here so you can actually see the answer here. The answer is 3 natural log of E to the X plus 4 plus 2 natural log of E to the X plus 2 minus 5X. Don't forget your constant there, plus C. And there's my result. <coughs> and what you're really doing is integrating much harder stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. Well, I leave the DX there. So the DX is there, but I just move the function, including the X, in front of this guy. But he's an X. He's a variable. You don't get to go in front of the integral because he's got an X in it. Only constants go in front of the integral. So he's got to stay back here, and then i got to substitute that X variable into a U. Well, E to the X is U, and that's how that U showed up down here. And he's a variable. Only constants go in front of an integral. Variables cannot. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Other questions? Oh, there's one over here, and I'll get one. Yeah. Cancel out the U. Wait a minute, hold on. Cancel out the U and the 16U. Oh, nope. Let me explain. See, that's a minus right there? Minus 40. You can only cancel through strict multiplication division. That's a minus 40, so I got minus 16 minus U. You can't cancel that U down there. That doesn't work. Other question? Yes, ma'am. E to the 2X. Oh, the E to the 2X. Okay, E to the 2X. Over here, I rewrote E to the 2X as E to the X squared because a power to a power you multiply. So E to the X squared is the same thing as E to the 2X. And when I'm substituting, remember, u was e to the x. There's the e to the x, and that's where the u squared showed up at. Does that make sense? Well, look at this stuff, because this is the kind of stuff that we'll be doing. But this was partial fraction, but we got the next section. The next section is section 6.4. 6.4 is using tables in a grade. Now, you still need to have your algebra skills at their best. No arguments there. But instead of having these formulas memorized, you go look them up. So that's going to save yourself at least some time. But you got to know how to look this stuff up. So I did a lot of these problems on the pre-section video for you guys. So hopefully you watched it and took the quiz and made 100 off of it. So I did all these problems. So in terms of the algebra review for this particular section, You need to be able to pay attention to get the form in the right spot. So that problem I did just a few seconds, well, a few minutes ago now, was that idea of, you know, u being the square root of x, so u is equal to x type thing here. Well, you need to kind of go that kind of stuff in reverse. So remember, x is also the same thing as the square root of x squared, because I am going to be interested in this u squared plus a squared or u squared minus a squared look for this stuff. So that complete the square mess hasn't long, long since left you. We can still continue to use it in this section here. So in terms of these problems, you want to write them as a single variable, a single term squared. So 4x squared is going to be the same thing as 2x quantity squared. That's what we want to write them as. So this is the, basically the algebra you need to have mental pictures of. 25, you've got to view them as a squared is 5 squared. But what about 5? Five in terms of something squared is the square root of five squared. What about eight x squared? That's going to be the square root of eight x quantity squared. Because we're going to be setting these guys up for table formulas. So they're going to be looking for something squared. And you got to be whatever you got in your problem, you got to write it as something squared. What about this dude? This is always one of the tough ones. What about y to the fourth? What is that going to look like with something squared? You've got it, y squared squared. And here's the one we just discussed a few seconds ago. What about e to the 2x? e to the 2x is the same thing as e to the x squared, because power to a power, you multiply. Okay? You know, in terms of cleaning this time kind of stuff up here, you're supposed to kind of figure out what must the constant be here. If you got 4x quantity squared, and you're supposed to be looking like a times 8x squared, what does a have to be? Well, no. Uh, 2, yes. Oh, <laughs> 2. Well, the first one, someone said uh, 4, but it wasn't answered. Today's 2. All right, so basically, you're going to make this an equation if you get in trouble. So how do I do that? Well, 4x squared is the same thing as 16x squared 
is <coughs> a eight times a x squared. The x squareds cancel. Divide by eight. A has got to be sixteen divided by eight, which is two. Three a and so three y. Try that again. A times three y squared is supposed to be equal to eighty one y squared. What does a have to be? Well, this is a squared times three squared, which is nine times y squared is equal to 81 y squared. Well, the y squareds cancel, and I can uh, divide by <coughs> 9 on both sides, so I get a squared is equal to 81 divided by 9. What's 81 divided by 9? 9. And what's a got to be? Let's square both sides. That enforces a to be equal to what? 3. So a lot of manipulation to get the forms is what you're going to be having to do. What does the A have to be in the problem? So in this particular section of the notes, I have taken the back of Dr. Stewart's book. In the back of your textbook, there is 120 basic integral formulas. There are a lot more than that. There are thousands of these guys, but if you want to see all thousand integral tables that are out there in the world, uh, in the old days, we used to have something called a CRC hand table book. It was a table of just math formulas. Part of the book was derivatives, other part was integrals, and then all the algebra formulas and trig. It had everything you want to know in terms of a formula, in terms of math, called a CRC hand table. But now we live in the 21st century of uh, computers, so we have a lot of this stuff actually downloaded on the computer. You can go look up these forms on computers. There's a lot more than 120, but the way the CRC hand tables are organized is the way you need to look at them because they're organized based upon the concept of U substitution. So these are my tables. The first 20 are basic formulas, okay? And these are the first 17 are the ones that you typically, or first 18, are typically the ones you have memorized. Yeah, I didn't actually make you memorize 14 and 15 over here, but the rest of them I did. Now, 19 and 20, I don't make you memorize either, so you can go look those guys up, but the rest of them are ones you're expected to know. So these are your basic ones here, okay? And now you'll notice also uh, with this stuff, you got the, even the arc tangent form we now have memorized and stuff. But now look at the rest of these tables. They're setting you guys up. This is forms involving a, the square root of a squared plus u squared, uh, where a is greater than zero. a squared plus u squared. u is the variable, a is a constant. So we're going to be trying to integrate stuff that looks like this, and we're going to have to convert our problem into the formula so we can apply the formula. That's going to be the trick. Look at the next set. Forms involving a squared minus u squared. It's different when you add a variable versus subtract a variable. Different set of formulas. Forms involving u squared minus a squared. It's different, but now the, the u squared, the variable, is in the front, it's positive, and the a squared is in the back. Wait, we got more. Forms involving a plus bu, linear factors, and all these guys. Keep going. Forms involving trig. You know, the basic sine and cosine are on the front page, but this is sine squared, cosine squared, tangent squared, and then you got the cubes, and then you got the famous n powers, cosine, integral of sine to the n, u du type thing here. And you notice if you look at the forms, you're beginning to see where these formulas came from. This is an integration by parts formula that they've derived in terms of formulas based upon the n, which is the power of the sine. You're, basically, here's your angle formulas, inverse trig forms, that, uh, that you can integrate, and then uh, more advanced trig forms, and then you've got the exponential forms, hyperbolic forms, uh, forms involving the square root of 2AU minus U squared. This is where we're going with this stuff, because we're going to be integrating problems like this. They're going to get very hard, but we're going to be looking about on table. So when you do your web work on this section, we're going to ask you about what's u squared, what's a squared, and we're also going to ask you on web work what formula on these tables, this is matching to the textbook, that you have to use to be able to integrate this guy. We'll do these problems next time. Study hard. I'll see you guys on Friday.